So welcome to the Cyanide User Group meeting, uh, or SNUGS. And so today we're going to talk about uh, a new cluster we have. Uh, just came online, well, came online a little while ago. It's just become uh, accessible for all users, called MIST. Uh, and so we'll go over what that is. Uh, but it's a GPU cluster that is supposed to be an extension of Niagara. It's also the replacement of the GPU cluster that SOSIP had. But, uh, so. <clears throat> about MIST. So um, this is MIST. And it, it's a, f uh, a, a nice size, but not terribly big supercomputer. Um, it's 260 GPUs uh, in uh, 54 nodes. And so it all fits on this one picture. And uh, that's pretty much it. And <clears throat> my kids always. And they never think that my supercomputers are very impressive because there's just a couple of you know, closets with with stuff in it. <laughs> yes, yes. So, but it, it, this is the, the this is what it is. Um, and um, it, they are the latest uh, generation of NVIDIA GPU cards that are in there. Uh, they have a nice a bit of memory. Each of them has 32 gigabytes uh, of of RAM in each of the GPUs. That's fairly sizable as far as GPUs go. Um, and then they are hosted, that's how GPUs go, they are hosted on a, a host machine, and these host machines are uh, IBM Power9 uh, uh, machines. So they're not like CD6, uh, which uh, has some uh, consequences for the software stack. Um, but they, So these are basically uh, boxes of four GPUs. Uh, in each box, in part of the GPUs, are these Power9 chips. They, uh, there are 32 cores. Um, uh, of them, and uh, the whole box, each host has 256 gigabit, gigabyte of RAM. Um, uh, not mentioned here, but those uh, 32 CPUs pretend that they are 128 CPUs by uh, some clever uh, hyper-threading technology. Um, <clears throat> that's each box. Each box is, is, uh, is nice and powerful, but then it's, it's connected through an InfiniBand network, so you could run uh, across nodes uh, fairly uh, efficiently. Uh, the GPUs themselves have a specialized interconnect as well called NVLink um, that can uh, speed up the communication between GPUs. It used to be that any communication between two GPUs had to go through uh, a CPU. Again, that's with the NVLink not necessary. Um, another thing that's nice and that's, that's kind of why this is an extension of Niagara is that it shares the file system with Niagara. So if you're working on Niagara, all your files uh, are also on, on MIST. Um, and so it's it's uh, it does that. This cluster is part SOSIP and part Cyanet or part Compute Canada in terms of who, who funds this. And so um, this is the uh, the makeup. So you, so a large <laughs> fraction of the cluster will be uh, allocated uh, for SOSIP. So SOSIP projects are projects. If you don't know what SOSIP is, it's a uh, Southern uh, Ontario smart computing initiative platform, something like that, innovation platform. Uh, they try to uh, uh, um, promote innovation by uh, having projects where there's both a, an academic partner and an industry partner. Uh, and so you'd have to request uh, uh, time by, by submitting a project if you want uh, dedicated time on the SOSIP machine. Um, but 30% uh, is, uh, is Signet or Compute Canada. So if you're a Compute Canada user, you can get access and you can use these, uh, these machines as well. And because it's a shared resource, the nice thing about it is that if any uh, cycles aren't used on the SOSIP side, um, the Compute Canada side can use it and vice versa. If any cycles on the Compute Canada side are not used, SOSIP users can use it. So that you basically get more resources than you would if you bought separate machines and, and didn't give everybody access. Um, it is kind of smallish. Uh, for just the uh, the Compute Canada side, so that's why all users, uh, Compute Canada users, have a default access. There's no allocations for that. It's it's basically uh, equal access for all for this machine because it comes down to about I think 16 nodes, which is a bit a bit little to to allocate. So if you're on Niagara and you work, you've already have access there, uh, you should now be able to to log in to NIST to MIST and uh, and work there. Now, because this is a GPU cluster, there's a few uh, kinds of usage that we expect to see on this system. Uh, we expect to see a fair number of uh, machine learning projects. 
uh, we see we expect to see uh, molecular dynamics and MD Gromax uh, packages that are already ported to GPUs and can use them fairly efficiently. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We've also uh, tried to make uh, all the different technologies that are out there to program GPUs and to port non-GPU code to GPUs uh, accessible and, and available. And so that, that hopefully is something that uh, this will give people uh, opportunity to try that out if they haven't already. Um, the thing with GPUs, and you probably know that if you are here, is that potentially the, the amount of uh, uh, computing power in GPUs per watt or per or even per second is much greater than you get for an equivalent amount of CPUs, uh, but you have to program them uh, specifically for it. So either if that's already done for you in a machine learning package like uh, TensorFlow or uh, Molecular Dynamics, that's great. You can get started right away. Uh, but if you have your own code, you're going to have to uh, rewrite it. So how do you get onto this system? And uh, this is, this is uh, as I said, the first uh, day that it is, or even the first hour that it is accessible to, to all users. So uh, this is all early days, and things might still change a little bit. But <clears throat> the access to, uh, to MIST is done in the same way as access to Niagara. So to get access to Niagara, uh, you have to go on the CCDB and click on a button uh, to opt into the service. Um, and that will then trigger an email that will then trigger a, an account creation or really a, a, a home and scratch and, and possibly project folder creation. Um, <clears throat> once you've done that, or if you're already, so if you've already done that, if you have access to Niagara, you're already set. Um, you, can, uh, you can do step number three. Uh, though you shouldn't really uh, skip step number two, uh, read the MIST documentation. This is a very different system from Niagara. The architecture is different. Um, the way it's scheduled is similar, but still different. And so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those differences. Uh, but it's all uh, on, on the quick start there, on the, on the MIST documentation side. And that's the one that will get updated. So you could download this PDF, the PDF of this presentation, which is on the website. Um, but it, it will probably be outdated in, in, in one week, uh, not in broad strokes, but, but in the details. And so that's, that's where you should go to, uh, to get the real documentation. So then you would have seen in that documentation that the way to get to MIST right now is to SSH to Niagara. So SSH username at Niagara. <clears throat> and then from there, from a login node there, um, you can log into the login node of MIST. So MIST has its own login node. Uh, so SSH, right, the, the login node is called MIST-login01. We are working on and making that a one-step process where you just directly log in to MIST like you do uh, for Niagara. And that will probably come in line uh, in the next few days, but it's not there yet. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> this is a login note. Uh, like on Niagara, on a login note, you can compile your code, you can write your JavaScript, you can run small tests. Uh, this, login note, this login note is the same architecture as the rest of the nodes. And that architecture is different from Niagara. So you do, you do need that login node. Uh, and, and so you can run anything that you can run on the, on the compute nodes on the login node, and vice versa. That's a good test. But you shouldn't overuse it. It's just uh, I mean, it's shared among everybody. Once you are comfortable that your job will, will run or will, will work, you, you write a job script and you submit it. Um, another thing, because this is a very different architecture, um, the, the software stack is different, um, everything is different, uh, be careful putting anything in your .bashrc. Like if you have any module load commands in your bashrc for Niagara, even if they worked for you, um, they're going to throw all kinds of errors when you log into MIST. Uh, so, so try to not do that. Keep that simple and write a little uh, script that you can source when you log in uh, in the different machines to set up your environment. OK, so you're in, <coughs> and now you want to compute. Uh, so like in Niagara, uh, we're using Slurm as a scheduler on the MIST system. Um, so you have to write a JavaScript, and you give it to sbatch, and that's it. Um, it's, a <coughs> it's only 50 uh, nodes. On Niagara, we schedule by node, so that would give a very fine, a very coarse grain scheduling. Um, and there's a lot of cases where people can't use the four GPUs on a single node in, in one job. So we're doing things slightly differently. 
uh, we allow single GPU node jobs. And so you can get one GPU. And with that GPU, because there's four GPUs on a, on a node, we've set it up such that if you get one GPU, you get a quarter node. Um, <clears throat> So you get a quarter of the, of the RAM, you get a quarter of the cores, so eight cores that are pretending to be 30, 32 cores. And the way you ask for that is pretty simple. Uh, you have to specify a time and the fact that you want one GPU. <coughs> and it says GPUs per node, but you're only going to get uh, one and all. If you want a whole node, uh, <coughs> if you have a whole node job to do, you want four GPUs, um, you have to invoke that slightly differently. Um, First of all, you have to run in the right partition. So you have to allow a full node to be allocated. Um, <clears throat> what that will mean, uh, practically for you, is that if you ask for four GPUs just like that, uh, and we allowed that, then it could be that two of the GPUs would be on one node, another a GPU on, a, on another node, and, and yet another node. That's not, that's not going to be optimal. So this, full, this compute full node will just mean you get by node allocation like on Niagara. Um, but we have to specify that that's where it has to go. Uh, we have to say that the number of GPUs per node is four. That is more of a reminder for you, but we'll insist on that. As batch will complain if you don't do it right, it'll give you a hint on how to do it correctly. Um, you don't have to do one node. You could do multiple node jobs as well. In that case, you can change the dashes nodes uh, option to two, three, four, uh, I guess potentially up to 43, um, although I think we have a limit on that. Um, <coughs> That you have to make sure that that works for your workflow. It's not automatic that that works. Um, one thing you might notice, um, especially if you're coming from one of the general purpose clusters of Compute Canada, is that um, you don't have, you're not asking for a number of CPUs. With a single GPU, you get eight cores and 32 virtual cores. Um, automatic. If you have four GPUs per node, you get all of this, the cores in that node. The same with the memory. If you ask for one GPU, you get a quarter of the memory of that, uh, of that node, um, so a quarter of 256 gigs. <coughs> um, if you ask for a whole node, you get all of the memory of the node. There's a few things you can do when you have a whole node to yourself um, that are kind of nice and might not be applicable to everybody, but basically you can treat the, the GPU memory <coughs> as, as real memory. Um, if you ever wanted to play with that, you need, you need to do whole node jobs. Um, but um, um, another thing that we're not asking for specifically is the, uh, uh, the number of ranks in this, but that's because the, the exact, the, that's just a matter of examples. If you run an MPI program, you should ask for as many ranks as you want with the dash n uh, option. Yeah? Is the n task set? set? You no, know, it's actually set to 1. Yeah, so the idea here <coughs> is that, especially for the single GPU jobs, um, you want one GPU, you're probably going to have one driver program running one GPU, so that you could actually do an S run command and it would do what you expect. Um, if you wanted to run eight uh, uh, things, you could still say dash, 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 and tasks eight. So the default is one task, which I think also is the case for the multi-node job, so there it becomes tricky. The, yes, but when you're doing multi-node MPI stuff, you must set that. It, yeah. Um, and then finally, if, you, if you're going to be a SOSIP user, you'll have a project ID. Um, to get that, uh, that allocation, you'll have to set your dash A uh, uh, parameter for, uh, to your project ID. Uh, for CC users, that's not necessary. So that's what your job scripts are going to look like. But before you want to do that, you want to test it out. Right? You just try things out, make sure it works, not just submit some big, uh, big job and then have it fail in the first second. So we've set up some way to do this interactively in essentially a debug job. So if you've worked on Niagara, you probably know the debug job command. This one is a slight variation on that, uh, where you can ask for the same kind of idea, um, a, a, a certain number of GPUs. So if you want to debug, and so the difference here is going to be, we were on the, on the uh, devel node. This is a shared node. Um, I might try to run some GPU code, and if I'm unlucky, um, the four GPUs, they are already taken by some other processes and will, will fail. And then I try it again and it might work. Um, the performance is also not going to be reproducible. So uh, if you want a dedicated resource to, to test your stuff out or you want to run for a longer test, uh, that's where the debug job comes in. And it will put you on a compute node. 
So debug job or debug job dash G1 will, will basically be the equivalent of this single node job for two hours, but at a prompt. So now you can just start running things uh, at the prompt. If you want a whole node job, uh, you can do that. You just say, I want four GPUs, and that automatically will translate to something that looks like a single whole uh, four node job. Um, if you want to do um, two nodes, yes, for eight. The amount of time you get in this debug job decreases with the number of resources you ask for, and there's a limit, because we want this to be somewhere where people can quickly try things out. And so it, this way, it's fairly likely that there is some uh, node available where you can just try this stuff out. Um, if we made this be a, a, a day long, then somebody even inadvertently could just be blocking the, the debug capabilities of others. So that's, that's the idea. Yeah. OK, so you're in. You might be on a debug job. What can you do? And so we, uh, we have a, <coughs> a, a set of software modules, um, like, like on the Niagara and on other systems. Uh, what we cannot do. Uh, is to inherit the software stack that they have on all the other Compute Canada systems, and that's also available in Niagara, so the CC environment, uh, because those are not the right, the, the right uh, architecture. So those are all written for x86, uh, all compiled for x86. This is our PC architecture. And so everything has to be rebuilt, which means that our current stack is kind of brand new. It's, it's more or less minimal. So if you find that you need something that's not there, you think it could be useful to everybody, just send us an email saying, hey, could you install this and this because I think it's missing. And, and we'll probably just, just get that done. Uh, so what is there now is kind of the, the basics uh, of, of the expected usage, uh, allow the expected usage. So we have a Python distribution. Um, I'm not a big fan for an, of Anaconda for supercomputers, but um, it does come with a whole bunch of uh, packages pre-installed. Uh, so we have that for Python. Um, if you're going to do CUDA programming, there's CUDA. Uh, so that's a module. Uh, in fact, because this is a GPU system, almost anything needs CUDA to be loaded first. Um, uh, Anaconda, I think, is an, exam is a, an exception to that. But CUDA has to be loaded to do anything else. Um, then we have a, a GCC module that allows for compilers, uh, C, C++, and Fortran. Um, these GCC compilers can do offloading to uh, GPUs with OpenMP or OpenACC. Um, what's also kind of funny is that uh, even if you load CUDA, you can't compile CUDA code. Or you can compile CUDA code, but not the host code. So you need, to compile, so you need a host compiler for that. So CUDA, as a module, just gives you the GPU compiler. And then you only need also the GCC. So usually, if you're doing CUDA programming, you'll need module load, CUDA, GCC, and then you, you're set. Um, the GCC is not the only compilers that we have. We have the Excel compilers. Those are IBM's compilers, so they are uh, more familiar with their own technology or their own chips, hopefully. Um, and they actually do a very good job with the OpenMP GPU offloading, better than, uh, than uh, GCC at this point. Um, so if you're doing Open, OpenMP GPU programming, your best bet is Excel. Um, we have the PGI compiler suite installed as well. Uh, what they bring to the table is mostly good open ACC support. Uh, so that's yet another way to do uh, offloading. Um, and, and so by that, there is not one compiler that does everything fantastically for, for GPU programming at this point. And so that's why there's a set. But uh, hey, it's up to you. Um, and then we, on top of that, uh, if you, do, do, if you want to do MPI, so message passing, interface programming, we have the, the usual suspects, open MPI. And there's a spectrum MPI that comes from IBM. There's different MPI implementations that we have uh, in the module system. And then finally, we have a few applications like NAMD and Gromax that are already there. Do you have a question? Oh, so there's, there's specific pragma. Do you know what open ACC is? OK, so, so offloading. Oh, like, so the, with, okay, let's take a step back. Um, if you want to program for GPUs, you have to write things for the GPU. And um, the most common way to do that on, and, and basic ways to do that on NVIDIA GPUs is to use CUDA, where you write, you say, this piece of code will run on a GPU with some syntactical uh, uh, extras. Um, but it's sort of separate code. Um, what you can do with OpenMP offloading is that you can have basically a code that works on the host. And you say, well, this particular uh, area 
could be offloaded to a GPU. So you put in a pragma, a, a, a compiler directive in front of it says, this section of the code can, can run on a GPU, and then the compiler will compile that part for the GPU and take care of all of the... Uh, well, it's now standard in OpenMP. Yeah, yeah. So it works just like Yes, it works just as Pragma. It's just Pragma-based, just as, as other OpenMP. Yeah. So uh, usually OpenMP is for spawning threads. Here it's for spawning kernels on GPUs. Yeah. Okay. So we have all that available and, and um, working, as far as we can tell. We have worked out the kinks that we found. found. If you find new kinks, let us know. Um, NAMD and Gromax are a decent GPU-enabled molecular dynamics application, so they're, you, you don't have to do any programming, you just use them. Um, and uh, to some extent, there is documentation on all of these on the, on the MIST uh, documentation side. Um, I'm going to assume you guys know about module commands. Um, if there's a module that, because there there's, might be dependencies that you think is there, but you, know, you don't know how to load it, module spider, and then the name of the module will do that. Uh, loading sort of is self-explanatory. Uh, and so is list. So as I said, there's there's likely still going to be some changes, and that documentation is currently maintained, uh, and will will remain being maintained at this uh, uh, missed page on our documentation site. Uh, if you have questions, um, request for more modules. Um, and, or just generally other support questions, you can write to the usual support channels. Uh, for SOSIP, you can also write to sosip-support at Um So that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, I can do a little demonstration, but let me ask if there's any, any further questions at this point. Who's going to try it? Nobody? I'm going to try it. Try it out. Give it, give it a shot. Okay, so let's see. This is this is the scary part because I have no idea if anything's going to work. But um, let me see if I can log in. So first thing, let's go to Niagara. That never works. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but whenever you type a password when there's people watching you, even if they're not watching your fingers, it's, it's always wrong the first time. Um, yes. <laughs> okay, so this is just Niagara. Apparently, I have to clean up my scratch. Um, but uh, from here, I, I should be able to log into missed login01. There we go, and now, it's, now it says missed. Good. It's the same scratch purging uh, warning because the file systems are shared. So if there's a scratch to be cleaned up on one system, it's the same on the other. Um, so I can do a, a little module uh, fail. Let's do module spider, it gives you everything. And so you see that there's a couple of things. There's our anaconda. A few things I didn't mention, there's a CMake, uh, there's an auto tools, there's an FFTW. Uh, but the things that I also mentioned, like GNU plots, Chromax, NAMD, uh, Excel, they're all there. Um, so let's see if the debug uh, command works. Let's ask for a debug job, debug job. Okay, so it's requesting one GPU for two hours and zero seconds. Um, there we go. So I've just moved from the login node to a compute node. And um, one way to know if your GPU is doing anything, there's a, there's a command that is kind of handy. It's called NVIDIA SMI. And it tells you um, about the GPUs you have and if they're doing anything. So here, I, I only got one GPU. This is a node with four GPUs. but because the scheduler has only given me one, that's all I can see. And there's no running processes, which makes sense, because I'm not running anything. Um, you can see what CUDA version there is, driver version. Um, if I instead had asked for four GPUs, 
which I will now get for half an hour, um, then that same command would show four GPUs. Well, hard to see now. And again, nothing is running. So, suppose I wanted to do some uh, OpenMP offloading. So I have to load a CUDA module and a GCC module. If I just try GCC, it's going to complain. Oh, oh. Uh, big complain. So it says, yeah, yeah, I have that, but I'm not going to do it for you. Uh, you figure out how to do it. And so you could do your usual spidering. Spider GCC says, I have two of them, but I'm still not going to load it for you. And try with a specific version, and it says, oh, you know what you need? You need CUDA. So module load CUDA and GCC. Yeah, nice. Uh, module list should show it they're there, and they are there. So <clears> this <throat> already come with a make file. So I'm gonna make clean uh, make file. This is okay. ah. Yeah, see, that's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna go out of the debug session for now. As in Niagara, um, the file system, the home file system, is read only in a uh, in a compute node, and also in the debug node. So you're going to have to do some of your development on the login out. Um, OK. okay. So our, our, this is, it doesn't really matter what it does, but it is an OpenMP offload code. So I think it looks like. There's some pragmas here, and some pragmas here, and pragmas here. You don't have to know what it is, but this is the question is whether this will compile. So let's make this. Oh. One of the things that if you're doing development, you would have to figure out a little bit, and we'll try and put those on the wiki when we. Uh, we get a chance is all the flags you have to you have to give and that's not entirely portable between different compilers so this is an openmp offload i have to say dash f openmp i also have to say i want to offload to an nvidia ptx dash non um, and then there's some extra code i want to um, be optimizing for the power nine architecture all those flags don't really matter well they matter a lot for performance so you should put them in but they don't really matter for the capability of being able to do that um, so this was for GCC, but I can't find GCC because I currently didn't load that. So module load GCC, and then we get the same issue. No, I can't. I have to do CUDA first. Okay, there we go. So now that we make it. Okay, there we go. Um, I can try doing the same thing for, say, another compiler, like the Excel compiler, which I said was pretty good for, uh, for offloading. So if I load the Excel compiler, it will, it will swap GCC for Excel, but I'll have to recompile. And those are another set of, of flags. So uh, so here's some flags for the. QSMP, there's an offload, and there's some other extra stuff. <clears throat> when it's, it's time for you to tune your code, um, this is where you delve into those. Um, the dash n actually makes it not do anything. Let's see if it actually does it. <clears throat> oh, it's definitely doing it now. <laughs> it, it gives a lot of information, because I've asked it to. Um, <clears throat> about how it's offloading things. So PTXAS is, uh, is, all of, is sort of a GPU uh, assembler. And so it has all kinds of information for you, what it's doing. Um, but now that it's done, I can just run it. I should be able to just run it. 
except this is one of those nasty stack. Okay, there we go. Is this impressive? I don't know. Well, I wouldn't know if I recompiled it without having uh, any uh, GPU acceleration. But that's, you can say that in the code. So the, the OpenMP Pragma can get, have a, a device option, and then you can say what, which device it goes to. To have it split it up to different devices, I think you still have to do it by hand. Um, maybe they'll change at some point. But yeah, so, so it's using one. And so for many cases, you're, you're just going to be single GPUing. Um, so, so again, if you wanted to do both using the, the threads of the CPUs and the GPU, you'd have to split that up. And, and you could use both pragmas. At least it would be one code, but it'd still be two sections running at the same time. Yes. Yes, so that's one of the nice things about having their own login nodes. Um, since it's only meant for small tests, if everybody uh, promises to do that, there's going to be at least one GPU available to just run your test. Like if this was like a few seconds. This is totally fine. Yeah. So here's the here are the pragma. So uh, this is just data mapping. So that that's that's separate. But here there's a whole bunch of things happening in the same pragma. Uh, the target is the one that makes it go to the uh, the GPU, and then in the GPU you can have teams over which you then distribute. Um, so this kind of like the uh, like one one dimension of your block, right? And then parallel four, uh, that that spawns, well, doesn't really spawn, it's the next level. And so there, it, it kind of maps, right? Um, and here I have left everything at default, but you can actually say how many uh, teams there should be and how many. Yes. Um, so OpenHCC works best with the PGI compilers. So. It does work with GCC as well. So in terms of compiling and, and checking, fine. But the performance is really bad, OpenCC and GCC right now. And so, you know, it's one of those things. OK, so. And of course, all the flags for the PGI compiler are different again. So that's. Yeah, yeah. I just figured these out the other day. <laughs> um, so that's right. So here's PGI compiling. It also tells you a lot of things of what it's doing. Um, all right, let me just do the just do the Laplace ACC. That's the one. Oh, ACC. Okay. So. So you can see how long that that takes. It seems to be a little bit slower. It, but um, that's probably more of an optimization issue than anything else. Um, I have a feeling in the first case, I was properly mapping uh, or reusing memory that's already on the GPU without copying it back. Here, I think every iteration copies back. So. What is nice about PGI is that it does give you a lot of things of what has happened. So it tells you how many copies from CPU to GPU you did and back. Um, kind of tells you why it was so slow. Um, yeah. Question, other questions? Yes, that's a good question. A good, a good point. Um, so if you're running uh, uh, jobs on Niagara, if you have run, you know that, or you should know, that there's a website where you can check those past jobs and how well they did, called MySignet. And uh, we've incorporated missed jobs in there as well. So let me start to share that quickly. So, we, yeah. So both Niagara and so I, I have to log in to see those. It's not going to show that I've saved. Okay. Yeah, this is nice and long. We cancel it. Now. What? Yeah, failing does fine. It still showed. Okay, so this is good. Yeah, so this ran for a while. So you have four GPUs. How long it ran? How much did it use the GPU? How much you used the memory? 
Um, and so, you, yeah, so that that will give you a an idea. It's not it's not like it's not yet a time series like it is on Niagara, which maybe at some point, but not at this point. Um, but at least you can see overall over your uh, over your run um, how much you used your GPU. This is also still a little bit of work in progress, but um, it is working. Uh,